What's going on everybody? Welcome back. Glad to see you. We are just doing a start up here on this unit. Not much to bring you along with me for, but I got some tips, tricks, and I don't know, rules of the trade, I guess. Hopefully they will help you out, help you make the transition from being the green maintenance tech that you are now to the high speed super tech that you want to be. So number one, we're just going to dive right on in. Dive on in! Never assume anything. I know you've heard it before, but it's number one for a reason. The times I have gotten bitten in the butt as a tech was when I assumed something or I took somebody for their word. I don't care who was coming from, you don't know till you know. Always verify for yourself, never assume anything. Number two. I feel like this is a mindset issue. Guys get on call and they get into this negative mind state of how it's just such a burden. Every call that comes in, you can't stop that phone from ringing, so it will just reaffirm that burden for you every time that phone goes off. So I'd like to offer you a change in perspective. Instead of thinking about it as a negative, as a burden, start looking at it as an opportunity. You have the opportunity to run more calls than any tech at your company, to get more experience, to make the most money you can make this week. You have that opportunity. It's not going to stop the phone from ringing. Nobody can stop that. But a slight change in your perspective will make a world of difference. My service manager will appreciate this. Don't open the top or bottom of your panduit straps or zip ties. Make a cut in the side so you can grab them individually and then they don't end up in the floor of your van. Stop labeling your customers as crazy just because you didn't find the answer the first trip. I feel like a pitfall techs wind up in is they run a call, they don't find an issue with the unit, they get a call back and immediately they jump to, oh, this customer's crazy. They don't know what they're talking about. I checked that system. There's nothing wrong with it. And then you go over there and do less thorough of a job than you did originally. Sometimes communicating with the customer is key. Just be honest. Hey, I'm not finding anything. Can you help me out? What was the system doing at the time of the issue? How are you operating this thing? Can you show me how you make a call on the thermostat? But if you label these people as crazy, you'll never take the time to communicate with them properly. Not gonna lie, this one was a head scratcher and took multiple visits for me to figure out. Be better than me. Also check the wiring side of your pressure switch when leak searching a condenser. Every tech should know how to build capacitors. It will get you out of a bind if you're on call. You need a 10 microfarad, but you only have two fives. Wire them in parallel, and now you take your two fives and you turn it to a 10. When you're working on communicating equipment especially, and you have more than one wire, going into these terminals don't do them side by side like that they won't get a tight connection just like you can see this guy came right out so instead take your wire nut twist these wires together nice and tight and then install it like that you will have a tighter connection and less communication issues if you do this Treat loose spade connectors like you do your lady. Squeeze them tight now, and it'll save you from getting burnt later down the road. All right, we got a big ass coil that we got to get into that crawl space. Obviously, we can't carry it. We don't want to drag this new coil across the ground, get it dirty, potentially damage it. What do you do? Never you tell my drill sergeant. Cut one of the sides off of the box that the coil came in. Lay it on its side so nothing can happen to it. We got our pipes up in the air, they're still covered. And now we got something that we can drag through this crawl space without damaging this coil. Clothes hampers can help keep your van organized. We've got a used parts bin over here on the right, and we've got miscellaneous tools being held in another clothes basket over there, and it keeps things off of the floor and out of your way. The 5 16 side of your service tool will fit on this gas line nipple here when you're checking gas pressure on a gas pack and it will not chew this thing up like an adjustable wrench will. 
You can also divide capacitors if you wire them in series. Check across. Now we've taken these two fives and turned them into a two and a half. If you find yourself without a pressure chart for a unit, just remember 35 and 20. If we're talking about cooling mode, you want your indoor coil 35 degrees cooler than your indoor air. You want the outdoor coil 20 degrees warmer than the outdoor air. In the heating mode, we will flip-flop these. Indoor 35 degrees warmer, outdoor 20 degrees cooler. This isn't perfect, it varies with age and sear, but it will get you in the ballpark. Uh.